Can either of you guys explain the agile slash scrum methodology? Does it apply to solo developers? I see you're ready. I got I I got a thought on on this. No, no, you go first, man, because uh, I I have to I have to phrase my thoughts in my own head because that's a very <laughs> complicated question. Well, yeah. So agile, you know, agile development or if it gets a bad rap because agile and scrum have both been heavily corporatized and and monetized. So, you know, you'll see scrum classes and books and then you'll see corporations like I used to work for uh, my local government in Miami. And, you know, they were using it, but it was like the managers had put it in because they heard it was a way for everyone to to work faster and, and, and save them more money. So, you know, we all we did the, the scrum classes, got the books, got certified and all that. On the flip side, if you think of um, agile development, the agile manifesto as it was created, uh, and you can look that up and I'll, I'll link it if this is, turns into a clip or something, I'll link that. Um, it, it, it's 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 designed in order to help you be more efficient as a developer. Um, so, all right, that's basically agile, and you can look that up. But the Scrum methodology is basically um, a method a methodology that you use, like a process that you use when you work, um, and it really is designed for teams. Um, so, you know, it, it consists of things like having a daily stand up meeting uh, and having sprints, uh, and sprints are basically um, periods of time where you work, uh, you focus your work on a goal. So you can say, uh, like my company, we do the scrum methodology where I work now, we do three week sprints. So at the beginning of a sprint, you decide everything you're going to do in the form of, of tickets or work items. And you play some, you can, we, we even use an agile board. So you put them on a board and you say, okay, on the left side of the board is everything that's left to be done. In the middle is everything that's currently in progress. And on the right is everything we've done, completed and verified. So basically every day you start the day off by having a, a standup meeting. You say, uh, what have you done since last time we spoke? What are your current impediments? And what are you going to do today? So let's say it's the first day of the sprint. I'll say, hey, I'm going to take this item off the to-do. and I'm going to work on it. So then you work on it, you put it in progress, and then you put it to done. And then the next day you'll say, oh, I did this task. The idea is as a team, um, you're working through these tasks and you're getting an idea of what's called your velocity. And they have all, and this is probably more part of like the corporatized version where you have like burn down charts and you have uh, all these things that analyze how the team works. Um, and then you come to the end of the sprint, you have what's called a sprint retrospective. And the team all gets together and says, hey, what worked out during the sprint? What didn't work? What, where did we run into issues? All this to say, for teams, it's a mechanism, it's a tool to help teams work, to work together more efficiently and to learn and uh, cultivate the process of, of, of working more efficiently as a particular team. So if the question is, does it apply to solo developers? I personally work in sprints alone, you know, I have my own personal scrum board where I say this, and I do it on a week to week basis. I say in this sprint this week, I will be satisfied if I complete this set of tasks and I do my best to just lay out a set of tasks that I want to do in the week. And I work to my scrum board. I have, I use this thing called Kanban flow. It's a website where you set up, uh, you know, a to do uh, in progress and done. And I work to those solo. But what I don't have the benefit of is being able to bounce off other people in my team with a daily standup. I don't need to, obviously, because it's just me. Um, so you can do the Scrum methodology alone, um, but it's really a practice that's designed for teams, and it's based off of this Agile Manifesto, was, which was created by a bunch of developers um, at some conference. I don't even know when. Um, and it was designed to, to help teams be more efficient. So that's that's it in a nutshell. What are your thoughts? Right. So um, <laughs> I've probably bought into the whole thing a little too much since I work in a corp corporate environment. I, I don't know where to start with this. Um, I, I basically like. Okay. Okay. So let, let me let me try to try to paint paint a scene here. So first and foremost, um, Charles outlined what it is and what it work, how it works, right? He's 100% man on the head. It is incremental development with the goal of um, directing the the project based on what happened the previous sprint. So it, it's in summary, uh, waterfall was the old method, large chunk of features, build them, release them, move on. Uh, and that's simply not practical because in realistic terms, you have a backlog 
stuff gets left out, new stuff comes in, priorities shift. If you try to design what you're going to do as like a goal, and this is, you can drill this all the way back just to doing any any goal, right? If your goal is to clean a room, every single book on how to practically clean your room efficiently tells you to do it in stations, is to quadrantize your work and do it because your priorities will change. You'll clear out a space, you've now got more space, maybe I'll switch to doing this thing instead. And because if you do it in small chunks, you can, you can better redirect what you're doing. Um, and it just works out more efficient and it's easier to manage what you're doing. If you do anything in a large chunk, you're, you're going to do it worse than if you did it, you know, incrementally in bite-sized pieces. So agile, well, so I'll be more specific, right? That was the goal. So as software started to grow, people were aware that we can't just, we can't let a boss say, I need this piece of software, see you in two months. It's just not how it works. So what the, the idea became, let's work on these small incremental steps where we pick a feature, we do the feature. We, we make sure the app is deployable at the end of a sprint. That is the kind of, that's sort of like the golden point of it all. You should still be able to build it and run it and see your application at the end of two weeks or whatever your sprint is. It could be, it could be a month, but as long as it's, it's a, a general cycle. And the idea is at the end of it, you look at what you've got, you ask yourself what you want next, and then you move on to the next thing. But here's the fun bit. Here's why I was having so much trouble. Describing it, not so tough. That's kind of fine. Like you, you can sort of get the hand, like it's, it's a product management idea. The problem is when people say agile slash scrum, mm -hmm. this is a very big area. So a fun fact a lot of people don't realize, scrum technically came before agile. Scrum came first. I now, didn't even know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't <laughs> because scrum, actually the point of scrum wasn't just the stuff I outlined. The stuff I outlined is sort of, we need to get better at the process of building software. Scrum came out of the idea that the worst thing a programmer, the thing a programmer is worst at isn't writing software. It isn't even managing time. They're, they're terrible at managing time, but that's not the worst thing. <laughs> I know what the you're going to say. The worst thing is mitigating between a business and a programmer, is understanding requirements and turning that into a product. You will often go off and build something you weren't asked for, or the client will describe software to you that they want, but they don't use the right words because you know what the right words are for your environment and you build the wrong thing or you're talking across each other. So it's requirement gathering and and understanding the client is the worst thing that developers suck at. They're just terrible at it. And probably the bit you are thinking as well is, is documentation, is implying, is talking about what it does and how it interconnects. Um, and so the point I thought you were going to say estimating. Oh, well, yeah, no, I, that's, that's <laughs> probably, that's a good point. That does, maybe, maybe that's even higher technically on the list. Because that's um, part of the whole, be, well, yeah, well, uh, all right. It was, it was part of like, you when you deal with a manager and they're like, hey, do this. And with the waterfall method, it's like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then you don't do it. Why? Why didn't you do it? Because I don't know how to estimate how long it was going to take. I estimated it was going to take two weeks, but it just didn't because I suck at, yeah. you know, developers suck at it. And it's it's bad to say that they stink at estimating because it's, it's just really hard to estimate. You just don't know all the factors until you get into the code. I, I get very stubborn with, with managers. I just tell them I won't give them an estimate. Or if I do, I say I will I will literally double the estimate I have in my head because it's always better to, to under uh, to deliver to under under deliver um, deliver faster than you think you would rather than to, to take longer. Under promise, over deliver instead Thank of you. over That's promise, it. under deliver. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. It was just it was <laughs> in my head. Um, yeah anyway so so my point was the point of Scrum when it was originally thought of was actually to solve that problem. It was to solve the problem of the, the communication between the developer and the business. It's the fact that the developers are terrible at understanding what the business want. They keep thinking about, I will build the software, I will make it do exactly what the requirements say it should do and everyone will be happy. And that's never true. <laughs> but if you instead understand what the business want, you can deliver software that better meets their actual goals. So Scrum was a way of saying, let's manage our team efficiently. Let's, let's build, figure out what the client wants build the most business value product into the into what we're doing and move on. It was meant to make really, really efficient software. That was the original goal of Scrum. Now, here's where it gets interesting. So w without going down to the whole Scrum versus Agile and when the split off happened and when the theories came, it eventually boiled out that some, some sort of, some of the elements of Scrum uh, got changed and became Agile in insofar as it started to become more about the time management and about the cycles and about working with um, programmers' time. And the business side of it got left to the wayside a bit because it started to be used agile as a way of managing your time and using boards and that kind of stuff. And that became what it was. The whole dealing with the business portion of it sort of got left a bit to the side. But then 
in a way of the, as developers started to use agile and started to really enjoy it they wanted to bring it into the office because they saw how much benefit it was giving them for the stuff they were doing so that's where somebody dusted off scrum which has all the business connotations and said let's make agile but for business hmm. and uh it became a nightmare it became <laughs> scrum that's the joke version of scrum and the problem with that is it starts to become a cottage industry where scrum becomes this thing where you get scrum training to become a scrum master and there's scrum handbooks and mm -hmm. there's playing cards with scrum written on them that you use for planning poker and it became a business of itself where companies started selling scrum as they, they burst into your company and solve all your woes by setting up a scrum architecture and certifying half your team and it started to become this thing that was just not what it was intended for so there's still a bit of a war internally between is scrum good well it's often bloat and it's often hard to kind of quantify. And the same thing goes for Agile. The spirit of the two are still there. The point is still good. Break your projects into small pieces. Use some sort of managing boards to, to, to take the little tasks you've got. Move them into functional stuff you're doing and move on. Um, have your team have visibility on what you're doing. When you're done, have a retrospective. Think about what you did and you know work on the next portion. All of the concepts are good but just don't let it become a religion. <laughs> don't think about what all of the components are in terms of this whole rigorous set of things that needs to be done. You yeah, technically like you do things just to do them because it's the status quo and it's like, but is it really providing value? And, and I've been in situations where it's like, we're just gonna do the stand up today and everyone's like, well, there's nothing has changed. I don't have any impediments and everyone knows that. It's like, we're still gonna do it. But, but why? <laughs> just because yeah. it's like the religion, it's the, you have to do it every day the same way. And it has the same problem as well that TDD does, which anybody who says they are agile or they work in a scrum, they have a scrum master and they're doing scrum. Um, if you if you took any of the like the big bad scrum people like Jim Copley, who sort of is, is one of the big dogs of, of this whole direction of, of how um, of how scrum went, um, he would shout at you and say, you're doing it wrong. You're completely missing the point of what it is because it's just it's just the whole point is about being lean lean is the buzzword scrum was about being lean uh modern scrum is about building an architecture around the processes which you use to build software so yeah it's yeah big one, thing I, one thing i didn't mention when i was describing it i did mention the aspect of it, you know part of it is you want your team to become more efficient and this allows you to have a, like a lower like it tightens the feedback loop so you can constantly address what's not working um, but realistically, I think the biggest benefit you get is it allows you to tighten the feedback loop on the value you're, pro you're providing. So obviously in a business sense, when you're writing software, you're trying to solve someone's problem, whether it be the customer or if you're in B2B, you're trying to solve uh, some department's issue, uh, a problem with code. So if you do the waterfall method, someone cooks up some big feature and you you spend three months on it, probably six months because you quoted three months, but it actually took six. Then they get it and it's like, well, it's not really, it's kind of valuable and it does a lot of other stuff that I don't really need, but someone thought it would be great to add this feature and that feature. You know, the whole 80-20 rule where 20% of the, the application is actually providing value and the other 80 is not. So when you do, when you use the Scrum methodology, and I find this in my personal life going week to week, and then also what you described, Jason, how you clean a room. If you clean one segment, and then you, re the feedback loop is tight. It's like, okay, now I clean this. Okay, now I have space that's open. Oh, maybe I'm gonna change gears here. Maybe I'm gonna put this stuff over there now, and I didn't think about that before. The same thing is with uh, with developing using Scrum. Well, let's use a game as, as an example. Maybe you've cooked up this, sorry, huge MMO, and you're like, I I've thought of every feature. I made a design document that outlines every single feature. But for all you know, most of those features might not even be fun. So the best thing you can do is say, well, look, I'm just going to I'm going to get the player to move around. And, and in this particular case, my unique concept is that they have to collect these little orbs that temporarily increase their certain skills. All right. So maybe that's my thing. So then you spend a week working on that and you get it done. Now you, you put it in front of users. You, you let people play test it. You get feedback on it much more quickly than if you were to say, I'm going to develop this whole MMO and then I'm going to put it into alpha. 
and then you put an alpha. First of all, you can't get a player base to play, but let's say you did. People are just like, this isn't really that fun. You know, I'm not really interested in auction features anymore. You know, that's a World of Warcraft thing, and, and we don't really care about auction. We just want to, we really like this aspect of your game. It's super fast paced. Uh, the, the auction thing, I don't really care about. And you're like, well, I just spent like six months trying to figure out how to get the auction to work. So it, it tightens up the feedback loop so that you can provide more value to, in this case, your players. I keep talking about everything in like a business st standpoint because that's what I do every day. But yeah, you're game developer. So you, you really want to be able to say, hey, look, I'm going to go to a meetup, a local meetup next week, and I want to be able to show a new feature of my game. You don't want to say, oh, I have to wait until the end of the year to show people this. No, you want to get it in front of people as fast as possible. And if you use the Scrum methodology, it kind of, it helps you, it reins you in. So you're like, okay, this week I'm working on this feature so that I can show it off to someone next week. And then you get that feedback. So you're not like kind of all over the place working on this and that and the other. It's, it's you focus on one thing. And then in that way, you can provide the most value, the most fun experience for, for your players. So that's that. And really as for like tools, it. it doesn't really matter. Like I noticed a few things in chat, people are saying hack and slash. Yeah, I've used that. Uh, use Jira, Asana, uh, Kanban. There's um, there's an actual Kanban app thing, the board version. Trello, it doesn't matter. Like every single one of them boils down to it is a board, usually split into three columns, sometimes more. Um, and it effectively boils down to have your backlog of things you want to do, pick the ones you're doing, finish them. When you're done, evaluate, do it again. There's a lot more to it, and there's a lot of other benefits, especially if you start talking about... Um, how you manage, like my favorite concept in Scrum is what's called t-shirt sizes or points, depending on who your, who your uh, Scrum oh, master yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> um, that uh, it basically boils into that concept I, I briefly touched on earlier called planning poker. I don't think we should go into it. I think it's a whole different area that's irrelevant to what we're talking about here. Uh, but suffice it to say, there's a lot of benefits of that stuff that um, can help you with your own stuff, but also... There is a lot more to it when it starts coming to business scale that gets very beneficial. But in short, any 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 endeavor you want to do, you could use something like Trello to manage it. And I've done this myself with just my wall. So you literally just put three notes on the wall that say to do, doing, and done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my wife and I do Scrum, so we have a, yeah. our own little board up there. <laughs> and it, it, it's amazing. Like you, you have no idea the sense of satisfaction you get when you have, you know, clean office and you move a sticker from one side over to the other, and then you pick the next yep. thing and say, "What did I say? Oh, I'm going to go and, uh, you know, organize my books." And you then go and do that and you move it over, and you can actually start to see as things move over from the left side to the right. In my case, you you can actually see progress. You physically see the amount of stuff you've done <laughs> grow relative to the amount of stuff left to do. Um, it's it's just it's a it's a very good technique for any kind of project management and it just happens to be the one that tends to fall on, on most commonly for big projects, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those things too, where you just got to know the rules to break the rules. You don't, you don't want to have to do every aspect of it. Like, like we just said, the daily stand up. Um, it's not necessarily valuable to do it every day, especially if you have a small team and everyone can quickly say, no, we're good. We don't, someone might say, Hey, can we do the stand up today? Cause I, I ran into an impediment and I need to talk about it. So that's valuable. But, um, but yeah, you don't want to get stuck like doing every aspect of it. Um, and then just making it something that's more of a burden to you. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs>